Hello guys, welcome to the next episode of this Mercedes Sprinter van conversion. In today's video we're going to be fitting the water tanks. I've gone for a system where the tanks are held underneath the chassis of the vehicle. I've got a fresh water tank which holds 70 litres and I've got a waste water tank which holds 50 litres. We've got a couple of things to do to modify the tanks a little bit. I'll do that first and then we'll get to fitting them underneath the chassis. It's a really hot day today, it's about 31 degrees. It's going to be a bit warm underneath the van, but let's get stuck into it. These are the two water tanks. This large tank is the fresh water tank, and this smaller tank is the waste water. And then the connections that we've got on the end, this is upside down at the moment, it's going to be fitted with the manhole at the bottom. This is the water inlet. So the water on the side of the van, on that large flexible hose will connect onto here. This is a drain outlet which will just be run to the skirt of the van with a little valve and then this is the 15 mil supply pipe which will go to the water pump and then on the waste tank again this is a drain which will go to a valve on the side of the van underneath the skirt and this is the inlet now for some reason this inlet is literally less than half an inch i don't think this is big enough plus this tank doesn't have a manhole in it out of the two, it would have been better if the manhole was in the waste tank because, if anything, this is the one that you're going to want to clean out more thoroughly than this freshwater tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this connection off and I've got an inch and a half tank connector that I'm going to fit here to give me an inch and a half inlet and I've also got a manhole that I'm going to cut into the top of this tank. After cutting all the holes in the side of the van, I must have every single hole saw in the range that Screwfix do, but I still haven't got one big enough to suit this. This is 114 millimeters in diameter. So I'm gonna try and just cut this freehand. With my compass set at the radius, 57, I've just put some masking tape on the top of the tank and I've just drawn myself a little circle with the compass. I'm gonna drill a pilot hole inside that circle and then with the blade out of a coping saw or, or a little junior hacksaw I'm just going to cut this out by hand. It's only fairly soft this plastic so it should be relatively simple. Oh. While that is working, that's going to take us all week to cut that, so I'm going to crack out the jigsaw. When you're cutting tight circles like this with a jigsaw, you really need a thin blade. You don't want anything too aggressive like this, because this is really soft, this plastic, and this will chew through it in no time at all. So you want something with a fairly fine tooth and something with quite a narrow blade, and that will allow you to turn very tight corners. <laughs> just hit that with, oh no, it's a tight fit, I might have to just hit that with a file I think, good. Yeah. That's a better fit, and what we'll do is we'll run a little bead of silicon around there, some screws in just to hold it in place, that'll be perfect, and then what we can do then is We've got access to clean the tank out. Now for this end connection, I'm gonna to have to cut this off completely and then drill a larger hole. Because what I've got is I've got this tank connector. So it's a two part piece, it's threaded. It's got a little flange on there. This is inch and a half solvent weld. And then this back nut will go on the inside of the tank and this will do up and then that will sandwich the wall of the tank and again we'll probably put a little bead of silicon around there nip that up and then once the silicon's gone off that'll be nice and secure and watertight and then that'll give us an inch and a half inlet 
so the shower and the sink you know the drainage will be a lot better than just this tiny little inlet here I just removed these level probes they're really simple all they are is just a bolt a machine screw with an electrical spade connector on it that gets inserted into the tank and obviously that end of the bolt sticks into the water and when there's two in there if the water gets up to that level it will make an electrical connection between the two bolts and that will give us a signal back to the controller to tell us that the tank's full very simple idea that I'm going to cut the bulk of this connection off first so we can get in there with the hole saw Now because we haven't got a centre pilot hole, you know, because I've obviously got a hole there, my pilot hole on my hole saw is just going to flap around in there. So I'm going to drill a hole through a piece of wood. I'm going to use the piece of wood as a guide and then drill through the hole in the piece of wood. Okay, let me show you what I've got set up here. I've got the tank upright clamped to my bench with a couple of fast clamps. So that's nice and secure, you know, that's not going to go anywhere. And then I've drilled a hole in a scrap piece of wood with the hole saw that I'm going to use, exactly the right size, because I've got no centre. And this hole in the wood is going to guide the cutter through the plastic. And I've best as possible centred it on that piece that I want to remove. We can take it really easy, really slowly. We don't need to go at this very hard. The plastic's really soft. The cutter should go through it quite smoothly. There we go, really nice and easy, no pressure, just let the cutter do the work. And there's the piece that we've cut out. So I've got rid of all of that weld, plastic weld, and that inner part completely. So now this is just a nice flat surface on the inside and outside. And just a little light sandpaper just to take those one or two little burrs off and there we have it put that back nut on from the other side obviously with a little bead of silicon just to make sure that goes off and there we go we've got a solvent weld inch and a half connection and that's going to make sure that the water flows away from our appliances really easy. It's going to be much better than that connection that was already on there. Your sink has usually got an inch and a half outlet and your shower's got an inch and a half waste outlet. So the minimum you want really on any tank is you want an inch and a half inlet. You know, you want it to be the same size so that the same volume of water will run away. With a small inlet, all that's going to do is restrict the flow. And that means the water potentially could back up in your shower tray or it's going to take ages for your sink to drain away. So this is definitely one recommendation that I think is going to be worthwhile doing. So I've just got a tube of all-purpose silicon sealant which you'd normally use for sealing round baths and showers and so forth. It's waterproof, highly flexible and mould resistant. So perfectly adequate for this wastewater tank. Once that silicon's gone off, that'll be completely watertight. Not that the water's going to get up to that level anyway, but... And even if it did, it's underneath the vehicle, so it'll only drip onto the floor. That's the flange secured with some stainless steel screws. So that's going to give us great access into that tank. If we ever did need to clean that out, I can drop it off from underneath, open that hatch up, and then literally like swill it out with a hose or whatever. That's going to be perfect. Just put a little bead of silicon around this part. Just to sit that in there. 
and then similarly just a little bead on the mating flange screw that on from underneath and this doesn't need a lot of pressure really to be honest it only really needs to be finger tight once the silicon's gone off that'll be more than adequate and then last thing we'll do we'll just put these two water sensors back in that we took out earlier and these just act like a, a rivet the more you tighten the screw it squashes up this little rubber collar it's threaded insert inside there squeezes that up and then just makes that a watertight seal And then on the level gauge, we've got a couple of cables that will run down underneath the vehicle and join onto these with a couple of spade connectors. And then that'll give us a signal when the waste tank's full and it'll come up on the little control panel that we'll have inside the van. Once that water gets to the same level as sort of halfway on the inlet there, these two will trigger and give us that signal. I'm just using a bit of grey engine enamel primer just to put a coat on these brackets for the tanks that are going to be underneath the chassis of the van just to give them some protection. Once I've got a couple of coats of primer on then I'll give them a coat of black enamel and then that will just give them some extra protection stop them rusting when they're exposed to the elements. So here's the mounting kit that comes with the tanks. These are the brackets that we painted with a couple of coats of primer and then I've given them a couple of coats of gloss black that's just to give them a bit of extra protection they've got these sort of hanging down bolts so presumably we'll find a suitable hole in the chassis hook that in it it will go through the eye in these brackets and then with a nut on the other side that will secure it and hold the tank up to the body of the vehicle I'll probably replace these hex nuts with some nylock nuts so they won't work loose and then the remainder of the kit there's just some jubilee clips to connect the hoses onto the tank and these couple of spring brackets which I assume are for the drain hoses I'll show you a bit later on actually the drain hoses come with some taps so that you can drain both tanks from the underside of the vehicle now we've got some controls that come with these two tanks. We've got one of these nice little water gauges. This obviously displays the level of the fresh water tank. And then this red light just illuminates when the waste water tank is full. So we've got a six core cable that's been provided. The four cores go to the fresh water tank. And these two cores go to the waste water tank. However, this cable I know is not going to be long enough for where I want to mount this in the van. So I've already run a 7 core 0.75 control cable in, pulled into the van when I was doing my first fix. So what we need to do now is we need to cut this cable here, make a note of where these wires are connected. I'll take some photographs and I'll write this down, this colour combination. And then on this end of the tank, we've got this 4 pin spade connector. Now this is not very waterproof, considering this has got to be underneath the belly of the van, and is going to be in all weather conditions I'm actually going to cut these two connectors off I'm going to solder these cables together and heat shrink them so that that's a completely waterproof connection because I'm not happy with that being left under the van to be honest first thing we want to do is cut these little spade connectors off strip back these wires. These wire strippers are really handy. When you're soldering, what I find easiest is to put a small bead of solder on the tip of your soldering iron and then that transfers the heat to the wire a lot quicker. Float the little bead underneath and then feed your solder in from the top. That way the heat transfers to the wire quite quickly 
and you'll find the soldering a lot easier. That's all the individual cables heat shrunk and joined. That's a nice permanent connection now. And previously I did put another bit of heat shrink, a bigger bit, on the cable here. So now we can cover all of those up. Heat shrink this one first. And then I have got another one on this end of the cable because I knew it probably wouldn't be long enough that piece I had. So we can push that piece over as well just to be belt and braces. There we go, that's our four wires soldered and heat shrunk together. There's no way any water's gonna get into that connection. With the level gauge on the wastewater tank, this is just acting like a switch. When the water gets up to this level, it makes a contact between these two points. So although these cables are colour coded brown and white, it really doesn't matter which one goes on which because all it's doing is just making the connection between these two wires. So the colour is irrelevant. So we'll put a little bit of heat shrink on these as well. Push these onto the spade connectors. Make sure they're seated nice and snug. And then push the heat shrink down as far as we can. We may have to put a little bit of uh, insulating tape around these ones. Yeah, that little bit of Sikaflex will just keep those connections from getting any water on them and that will stop them going rusty or causing us any problems. These holes in the support for the spare wheel are where these brackets need to go. Um, unfortunately this hole's not quite big enough. Obviously you can't get this in here and get it to turn around so we just need to enlarge these so we can get these brackets in. Obviously now we've got a raw metal edge there, so I'm going to have to spray this with some wax oil. You need to make sure that any hole that you drill in the chassis obviously is properly wax oiled and sealed so it doesn't cause any corrosion. And then now this bolt will just fit in there and hang down, so see. The bracket will go on there and then we'll put a nut on there, wind it up. Now what I'm going to try and do, I've got the two brackets fastened up on one side with these two hooks and I've got to lift the tank and then get these hooks engaged on the other side of the bracket, that one there. So hopefully I can lift the tank in a position, spin the bracket round and then do up the other nut. Wish me luck. Okay, so putting the brackets on there wasn't a bad idea. It definitely helped me out. I had to rest the tank on my chest though, but they're all bolted up now. That's really secure. You know, there's no way that's gonna go anywhere. I'm just gonna put some nylock nuts on these studs just to make sure that those normal hex nuts don't rattle loose. But other than that, she's good to connect up now. So this is where the grey water tank sits. It's on the driver's side, directly behind the driver's seat in the first sort of compartment. It's a long coffin type tank mounted on this side and the connections are this end facing towards the rear of the vehicle. Again, it's got a couple of these straps with the hooks through some eyes in the chassis. Each tank has a drain connection that's this hose here and then we've got a drain valve fitted on the end of that and then a clip but I'm gonna to have to provide some better clips I think this whole hose needs supporting I may even cut it a bit shorter and then this valve gets mounted near the skirt of the vehicle and then that allows you to empty the tank so there we go that's the water tanks fitted underneath the chassis of the vehicle 
just remains now to connect the water inlet pipe, which is that blue pipe coming off of the inlet that we cut into the side of the van, and obviously the waste pipe from the shower and the sink. We have to drill through the floor, run that pipe work underneath and connect that to the waste tank. So I'm going to be doing that in another video where we're dealing with the pipe work, the water pipe work and the waste pipe work. So that will be coming up shortly. Please make sure that you do subscribe. I don't want you to miss any of these future videos. Hope you find them very useful. If you do, please do share them on social media. Give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Really enjoyed reading all the comments that you guys have left so far and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers.